Hi, my name is Dan Block, and I'm the manager of the Control Systems Lab at the University of Illinois. In addition to that position, I do also lecture a number of hands-on courses here at U of I that teach systems, embedded systems, and real-time control uh, for uh, simple robotic systems. Today's video is going to discuss this these two small experiments here that you can build out of one single circuit board. Over the last two or three years, I've been using student projects at the end of these hands-on courses to get students helping me develop these inexpensive inverted pendulum experiments. The first one is we've coined it the cheap leaf, and it is a reaction wheel pendulum that balance itself on the edge of this kind of cube here. We come up with the name Cheaply, uh, inspired by the Cubely from ETH Zurich, that amazing uh, cube that can balance on its uh, edge and corner. Uh, this, of course, can't do that. It's just got a single motor, but it is balancing on the edge. We can do small disturbances to this guy, and you can correct and keep that uh, system balance, so an inverted pendulum. There is a gyro, IMU on here, gyro and accelerometers, tilt and tilt rate, and also a magnetic encoder to sense the speed of the motor flywheel. The second experiment also can be built from this same. You can only build one out of these, this one at a time in a sense, um, but it's the Furuta style in inverted pendulum. We coin it Furuta because Katsutsa Furuta uh, made this uh, experiment a little more famous. He's used it a lot in his research, so that's why we coined it the Furuta Pendulum. Um, it's a little more involved. This one runs a little bit cheaper. It's got a geared motor. It's got bearings. It also has magnetic encoders to sense the angle of the links, uh, both the motor's link and uh, the pendulum. And with that feedback information, it can balance this unactuated pendulum. It can also swing the link up. So we can show it doing its swing up. And it doesn't catch it every time, but most of the time it catches it. Got a little uh, shaky there. Uh, and catches and balances the pendulum at the position. Moving the camera in closer, you can see the different parts of the reaction wheel are cheaply the reaction wheel itself, the DC motor, the housing that holds a magnet for the uh, magnetic encoder. Uh, just like the Cheaply, the Furuta is all built mainly with the circuit board parts, all the controller chips, the microcontroller is all part of the circuit board. There's, we use the, the pillow blocks for the bearings are made out of circuit boards. Uh, geared motor here, a little more expensive motor. Uh, and also there, the housing holding the magnet for the magnetic encoder. And the bottom there is all the control part, the, the microcontroller, the H-bridge for the motor, all enclosed in the circuit board for the Furuta pendulum. And you tap it, and then it switches between the balance control and the swing up control. And you can see there's a little bit of counterbalance needed to keep the experiments priced low. Many of the parts of both the Cheaply and the Furuta Pendulum were made of circuit board material. Here is the circuit board that gets fabricated and then can be diced and cut using either a shear or a small bandsaw blade. Depending on which experiment you want to build, you will use some or all of these parts. The busiest board there to the right is the controller board. It has the microcontroller, the IMU, the power regulator, H-bridge, um, everything you need to control this system. The main microcontroller for this system is the TMS320F28377S from Texas Instruments. It's a very powerful motor control microcontroller. The sensors used in these experiments are the magnetic encoder and the IMU. Both of these sensors can be communicated to through the SPI serial interface. So if for some reason you do not choose to use the 28 
377S microcontroller, you could very easily modify these boards such that the an Arduino could communicate and control the system, or even the MyRio from National Instruments. This picture shows many of the parts for the Cheaply, minus all the integrated circuits that need to be soldered to the board, the microcontroller, the H-bridge, the power regulator. Uh, but what we have here is the DC motors, very inexpensive little DC motor, uh, the black uh, 3D printed housing for the magnet, for the magnetic encoder, the coupler for the flywheel, uh, and then the IMU board there, the blue board uh, that we purchase. In addition, we need a power supply. This is a 24 volt, 2 amp power supply that is used to power the cheaply. You could do that, of course, with a battery. Uh, but we found uh, much more cost effective to just buy an inexpensive power supply. The parts for the Feruta pend pendulum are a little more extensive. It's a little more involved experiment. Uh, you can see all the circuit board pieces are used for the Feruta pendulum. Uh, we have a geared motor. It's a $20 motor compared to a $2 motor in the Cheaply. We have a little more beefy power supply. It is only 12 volts, but it does require a little more current, uh, at least 3 amps. Uh, the battery could also be used. In this case, I'm just using the battery. It's an old battery as a, just a heavy base. Um, you can see there's ball bearings. We need some metal stripping to hold the structure together a little more firm. A threaded rod for the inverted pendulum uh, and a um, number of other little couplers. So our goal with the Cheaply and the Feruta pendulum is twofold. One, to create experiments that are both exciting and challenging for students and show the capabilities of modern control theory. Two, make the experiment low cost so that each student is given the hands-on experience of building and understanding the different components that go into a control system. Sensors, actuation, and computing. If you find these experiments something you would like to use in your classes, I would be happy to help you get started with them. Thank you.